folks. Uh, once again, my name is George Sinclair, uh, Senior Pastor, Church of the Messiah in Ottawa. It's my great honor and privilege. Uh, we're going through the book of Revelation. We'll be looking at Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 8. And just as you turn to that, um, in the last devotional that I did, uh, we looked at the same uh, passage of scripture, but what we did was really a bit of an aside, primarily to talk about the uh, how do you figure out what the numbers are in the book of Revelation. Uh, so now we're going to look at the other things within the text. And if you're curious about how I'm using numbers, look at that last devotional. Let's read the text. Uh, oh, before I read the text, um, I'm a child of immigrants. Uh, I could actually get, um, I'd be entitled to get a, a passport for the Northern Ireland because I'm the, the child of immigrants. I was born about a year after they came to Canada. And uh, my, my wife is uh, the, the daughter of an immigrant as well. And, and, you know, both for my wife's father, and uh, who's Polish, and for my parents, my parents didn't come to Canada because they thought Canada wanted more Irish people. And my father-in-law didn't come to Canada because he thought that Canada wanted more Polish people. They came to Canada because they knew that Canada wanted more Canadians. <laughs> it's a really important idea, and it's going to be very important when you look at this text. So let's read it, uh, Revelation chapter 7, uh, verses 1 to 8. Uh, and the six seals have been opened, and uh, I'll talk in a moment about it, but there's a bit of a, a pause, a bit of an intern. In fact, actually, what you should think of, for those of you who've watched the X-Men uh, movies, uh, Dr. X has this ability to sort of, you know, we're all doing something, and all of a sudden we pause, and uh, it's as if time stands still for everybody in the world except for him, and he can move around. And, and sort of do different things or show different things to people. And in some ways, that's how you should look at this. It's as if between the sixth seal being opened and the seventh seal being opened, uh, this is one of three interims or pauses, so to speak, in the action in the book of Revelation. Um, I think it's ch uh, chapter 10 and chapter 14, there's gonna be two other pauses, interims between the pattern. And so one of the ways to think about it is just to think about it as, as Dr. X pausing the action and he might have a bit of a comment about what's going on and God has a bit of a comment about what for us so to speak and if you look at the movies after Dr. X has frozen everybody and then unfrozen them they don't realize there's been a pause but this is as if we're with God who's paused the action and we get to see something else and know something else about what's going on. The other thing uh, which these in terms serve is if once again you think of movies and stories if you're watching a zombie movie or often many types of chase or action movies. Uh, the movies generally don't just have you go from thing to 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 thing, to thing, to thing breathless for the entire two hours. No, usually what happens is there's a bit of a, of a respite. Um, you know, maybe in the zombie movie, I was watching sort of like a horror end of the world movie the other day and uh, at, at, in the early part of it, uh, the creatures aren't able to work at night and they figure that out, that they all sleep at night. So every evening there's a bit of a pause from the action and the adventure during the day and during that pause they have a bit of a conversation, etc. And that's another way to understand this as a story, as a book, what's happening in it. There's this action and then there's an interim, a pause. Uh, and then there'll be more action, a pause, more action, etc. So here's how it goes. Verse 1 of chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the son of Israel. And then I'm not going to read all of them, but there's 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. Then 12,000 from Reuben, from Gad, from Asher, from Naphtali, from Manasseh, from Simeon, of Levi, of Issachar, of Zebulun, of Joseph. And then the last thing is, verse 8, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. So, uh... Remember I've said there's a bit of an interlude, and here's one of the things which is really, uh, it's a really important idea to get in our minds and in our hearts. Uh, 
I can be in a hurry, I can be in a rush. Um, it almost always seems as if on Sunday mornings when I have to get to the services that I'm in a rush. <laughs> uh, and it's not because I've slept in. I, I've actually, uh, on Sundays before I come in, I, I get up quite a bit before I have, you know, I have a breakfast, I, I pray, I look over my sermon, my text. But it almost always seems that when it actually comes time to leave, I'm in a huge rush to get my shower done, to get out of the house and Zoom. Here's the thing. The Lord is never in a rush and he is always on time. <laughs> the Lord is never in a rush and he's always on time. That's part of this beautiful imagery of, uh, you know, there's about to be destruction unleashed upon the earth. And, uh, and the Lord just stops it, says, just stop. Okay, before the, instruction, the destruction continues, I want you to go around and seal on the forehead all those who are mine. <laughs> and you, you think about it, it it's pictured in this very, very powerful type of imagery of the chaos. The, there's the chaos that's going on with the, four, the first four of the six seals. And then there's, um, you know, there's this other bit of a thing about the, the, the seal number five and six. There's a pause before seal number seven. There's, there's all this chaos and action going on and martyrdom. And, uh, but the Lord is never in a rush and he's always on time. And, and the other thing, and this is, this is a really important idea as well, is that uh, even while the earth is in chaos, the triune God is sovereign and brings and is bringing ordinary people to himself. You see, here's where we see there's a bit of a pause from the, you know, the, there's the empire, there's civil war, there's uh, pestilence and plague and death and winds that are about to cause destruction. The last bit of chapter six is the earth people trying to go into the earth because uh, of the wrath and being covered and, and all of this type of thing. But even when the earth is in chaos, from our point of view here on earth, what the book of Revelation is showing is that the triune God is still sovereign. He's sovereign over all those forces. And what's he doing? He's bringing ordinary people to himself. Hence the, the angel sealing those who belong to him. And then we see this list of the 12 uh, which is like a, an important number. There's 12 tribes of Israel. There's, in a sense, it represents the people of God before Jesus. And of course, Israel still, uh, God hasn't forsaken his people. They still are important to him. God has a purpose for the people of Israel right up until the end of time. Uh, but we also see the 12 apostles, the basis upon which, in a sense, the church exists. And so the triune God is sovereign. He's bringing ordinary people to himself. Now, the list here is very interesting. First of all, the list uh, is not a normal or an adequate list, so to speak, if you're a, well, not, not technically, it just isn't. Why? It's missing two tribes. The tribe of Dan and the tribe of Ephraim aren't in the list. Joseph isn't a tribe, for instance. And, um, and uh, there's another type of a miscounting, not miscounting, but the, the list in itself shows that it's not, in a sense, Israel. It says uh, the sons of, from every tribe of the sons of Israel, but then there's something which is a bit missing in the list because there's two tribes which are missing. And um, the other thing which is very interesting about this is that uh, the book of Revelation is written somewhere before the year 70 and uh, maybe before the year 95, somewhere in that, that range of, of years. But um, Ever since the Northern Kingdom was destroyed, about six or seven centuries earlier, there are only three tribes left in the nation of Israel. Like at the time of Jesus, there's just the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and the tribe of Levi. The other nine tribes have disappeared from history. The other nine tribes have disappeared from history. And for centuries. So it's also a bit, a bit of an interesting list, isn't it? That they would then use all of these things. You know, I, we can puzzle over what that means. Just remember what I said a couple of weeks ago, but that, that what we can learn from Marshwiggles, from Puddleglum, about how to read the Bible. The most important thing is to remember what the Word says. And uh, we can be creative and speculative about it. I, I sort of think it's a bit of a reminder of, of, of several things. Um, uh, I think it's a little bit uh, a reminder of to us that... Um, that not all in the visible church are in the invisible church, that not all who go to a church building are actually Jesus's. And hence this sort of the, the way the 12 times a thousand, the tribes, and yet not all the tribes are mentioned. 
Um, you know, hopefully there's not a huge disconnect. Hopefully it's not a visible church that goes to church and there's a thousand people on Sunday and actually only one person's a real Christian. That would be very sad, although it might happen. But I think it's maybe partially a bit of that. I mean, we can be a little bit agree to disagree on some of that type of stuff. But I'd just like to bring two things in, close, in closure. The first one is, is the, the triune God, what we've seen from all of this, the sealing of the people, the connection of it to Israel, and, uh, and then as, immediately we're going to go after that, we're going to go into uh, a multitude of nations. It's another one of the reasons to not think the 144,000 is something literal, because you go immediately from that to countless number of people. So the numbers are symbolic in some ways. It's, I think, symbolic of 12 times 12. It's like Israel and the church times each other because the, the, there's been an explosion of growth and the thousand being an important unit in terms of tribes and peoples or uh, units in the army in terms of the battle imagery that goes through all the book of Revelation. But one of the things I think to understand this is that many in Israel before Jesus are saved. I think that's one of the reasons it's put here in that term. Uh, the Bible never explains how that can happen. It just indicates that it's true. That people before Jesus who are in Israel, many of those will be in heaven with us. But here's the thing I want to close with you. The triune God does not want more Canadians or more Africans or more Asians. He doesn't. He doesn't want more gays, more transgendered, or more straight. He doesn't want men, more men, or more women. He wants more doulos, more servants. That was the imagery at the beginning, right? My, when my parents came to Canada, it wasn't because they thought Canada wanted more Irish people. They thought Canada wanted more Canadians. <laughs> and uh, the Lord isn't looking for, uh, you know, for these little groups of people. He wants more to be his, to be his servant. And he's going to be calling us to be his servants out of the gay community, the transgender community, out of Africa, out of Asia, out of Canada. He's going to be calling us from all of these different places. But when he calls us to himself, he puts his seal on our forehead. He now owns us. Our identity and our destiny comes from him. And part of what it means to grow and be as a Christian is that we die to these other identities and receive and grow into our identity and destiny that we have in Jesus through the gospel. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, uh, thank you. I thank you that I'm a Canadian. Um, and I pray for Canada, Lord, especially during this time of pandemic, that uh, the, the pandemic would come to an end soon and that the government would be very wise in dealing with it. And I pray for all nations that are struggling with this. But Father, most of all, I thank and praise you that my true citizenship is in heaven, that you, Father, are my true God, that Jesus is my King. And I ask, Father, that you help me to live knowing that I am in your world where you are sovereign, you are in control, and Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless.